Let's just chat through what's happening on the market. There's lots of volatility. We are really being driven by news out of the US and China as well as Europe, whether good or bad. Mm. I mean, the first thing I think that comes to mind is the fact that markets are fickle. You know, it's driven by short-term sentiment in the market, and the short-term sentiment is driven by the news that's in the market right now. I mean, let's go back 12 months. 12 months ago, it was about the dollar. It was about America. It was about trying to find another kind of sovereign fund for the world, you know, or sovereign, uh, sovereign currency unit for the world, kind of the currency we do business in. People say the dollar is finished and it won't, you know, it, it, won't, it, won't, it won't emerge ever again as a, as, as, as a world currency. And f immediately people said, well, the euro is something that you should be looking at. Twelve months later, we're sitting in a situation where suddenly there's a whole bunch of issues in the eurozone, and all of a sudden now we're seeing the euro collapsing on the back end of that. We're seeing major, major fiscal problems in Europe, and now people are focusing on American gain mm -hmm. and saying, well, you know, maybe it's not so bad having, having the US dollar. And I think that all of these things just point to the very short-term sentiment that we've got in markets and the very, very short-termness that we've got as far as thinking is concerned in markets. So what should investors be doing, <coughs> looking at the short term or taking a much longer term view on what's happening at the moment? Look, I think, I think the two big criteria for investors and certainly things that we hang our hats on is the fact that you've got to buy things of quality. So if you're going to buy an asset, make sure you buy a quality asset. The second thing is make sure that you buy them at the right price. Make sure that you don't overpay for assets. Because if you buy quality and you buy it at the right price and you're prepared to then as a third element to that, hold it for long periods of time, you know, you, you're bound to make money out of it. And there are lots of opportunities still left in the market, especially when you look at the international markets because of, you know, the shifting sands as far as the fiscal debt is concerned in the Eurozone. Still in South Africa though, you know, I mean, the market is, you know, more expensive than it's been, you know, since, you know, for the last 12 months. As a matter of fact, if you look at it from a standard deviation perspective, it's actually at the upper thresholds of one standard deviation away from its long-term average price to earnings ratio. So South Africa certainly isn't cheap relative to the rest of the globe, but it also isn't hideously expensive. Well, there are certain stocks which are quite expensive, but you know, we've got earnings also opening up at the bottom end of that. Going back to Greece, the bond matures later today. The IMF and the Euro European Union gave them that nine euro, nine billion euro um, fund for that. A good move on that front. Well, look, I mean, I think it's part of the it's part of the, the complete bailout package because you know they've taken literally what the short term obligations for Greece is over the over the next twelve months, and they've said, how do we help you? pay this debt over the next 12 months so you don't go into default. Because we're talking about a cash flow squeeze for Greece. You know, we're talking about a business which, oh, sorry, I'm doing, I keep on thinking about it as a business, but this country is literally like a business where there's absolutely no cash flow left. So it's got its liabilities which outstrip its assets and you've got no cash flow left. Now, if you have a business like it, it defaults, it goes into bankruptcy. The bankruptcy court walks, walks in and it starts selling off all your assets and whatever's left at, at, at an auction. Now, this is literally the situation Greece is in. So we're just literally seeing a whole bunch of cash moving into it in order to create the cash flow and in order to try and stave off this, um, this, uh, this, this impending disaster and hoping that at some point GDPs will start growing, they can start paying off debt. All this sovereign debt was in Europe has seen the, the euro retreat to four-year lows. Some market participants are seeing parity between the euro dollar. Are you of this view or, or do we still have a long way to go before we can see parity between the euro and the dollar? But I mean, you know, parity was something that we saw when the euro got, you know, got floated. It was, it was at parity to the dollar. And we've just seen that gap open up because of the issues that, 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 that was perceived with the US dollar and with fiscal debt in the US and with its consumer base and the, the infrastructure of the economy. Now, all of a sudden, those exact same issues are at play in the eurozone. The only difference is that it's all fiscal debt. So it's not really got to do too much about the consumer, but it's got a huge amount to do with what happens at governmental level. <coughs> now you take that into consideration, and all of a sudden you start seeing this one currency, you start seeing the euro just selling down on the back end of that. It goes back to parity against the US dollar, which is in any case of a low point. Well, that's part of the medicine you take, I suppose. But a weaker euro isn't such a bad thing because it increases competitiveness for European exporters, particularly in the US as well as China. Yeah, I mean, the one, the, the one people, the one group that will really benefit from this is somebody like Germany, because Germany is, as we know, already very, very productive. They've got a whole bunch of brands they can sell, and a weaker euro just makes them more competitive. I don't know how much it really helps, you know, countries that don't really have a manufacturing hub and that potentially relies on tourism and other other sectors, and specifically. On 
on European tourists in visiting those regions. And let's face it, those are mostly, mostly in most, the most indebted countries are, are some of those. If we look at South Africa, we've got retail sales coming out later on today. The consensus is about an increase of 0.4% in March from negative 1.5% in February. Mm -hmm. Demand side of the economy is still a little weak there. Look, I mean, usually what happens is you get inflation that peaks, okay, and then retail sales usually back down on the back end of high inflation. And then when inflation recedes, then in essence, you've got a, a period of time that lapses before retail sales start turning around. Now, I think one of the big things that the retailers are talking about at the moment is that they're not seeing the increase in demand. Mm -hmm. You know, inflation is sitting at really low levels. Interest rates are sitting at really low levels because, in essence, we're just buying it, you know, from international because the rates are so low and inflation is so low overseas. But we're not seeing a knock-on effect in retail sales. That's going to take time to filter through. Remember that many South Africans, as com you can't really compare it to Americans, but m a lot of South Africans have got debt. And they're trying to now repay some of that debt before they start going back into the shops and start buying again and buying produce again. If we look at interest rates, are we likely to see them increasing in the first quarter of 2020, in 2011? Your probability of rates increasing far outweighs probably the probability of rates dropping further. You know, so if you look at all the signs that are out there, it'll show you that rates are going to increase. The question is when mm -hmm. and by how much. That's really the issues. And that has got a multitude of factors that are attached to that. And that's part of the reason why, you know, I don't forecast markets because forecasting markets will leave you nowhere.